G'day guys, my name is Caleb, otherwise known as the Critic Kebab, and in the lead up to the 92nd Academy Awards, I will be discussing my thoughts on each of the films nominated for Best Picture at this year's Oscars. I have a playlist with all the reviews, so make sure you're checking back frequently so you don't miss out on any of them. But if you do enjoy this video, please show your support by hitting that like button. Now, the film I will be reviewing this time is The Irishman. The film is directed by the infamous Martin Scorsese, and it stars Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, Joe Pesci, and so many more, and is streaming on Netflix. The screenplay is written by Steven Zellman, and the story is based off the book written by Charles Brandt called I Hear You Paint Houses which is Frank Sheeran recounting his time and life in The Mob. And now we have a Martin Scorsese gangster film illustrating that story. The biggest talking point about this movie is the 3 hours and 29 minute runtime. Yes, that is a really long time, but somehow they managed to pull it off, and they make a film that is relatively engaging from start to finish. I want to give a special shout out to Thelma Schoomaker, who was the editor of the film. This definitely has a chance of winning the Oscar for Best Film Editing, which it is also nominated for. When you're tackling a production of this scale, it is incredibly difficult to make sure every scene has a purpose and pushes the story along, whilst also maintaining an engaging pacing. Yes, there are a few moments that could have been shaved off, but for the most part, this film does not waste a moment of screen time, because it's all relevant. Martin Scorsese and Thelma Schoomaker balanced all this out close to perfection. For me personally, I wasn't fully captivated by the story. This isn't a negative at all, it's just that my personal tastes are more tailored to movies that give me that emotional rollercoaster feeling. This film certainly has emotional moments, but Scorsese takes his time and lets you get immersed in the world by allowing the scenes and conversations to play out naturally. The pacing is slow and methodical, and there is nothing flashy on display in order to keep you excited. The story speaks for itself, and Scorsese does a masterful job of directing the film. Robert De Niro plays Frank Sheeran, and he gives a really profound performance. There are so many layers to his performance, and he really is the heart and soul that carries the emotional weight of the narrative. All of the cast is fantastic, especially Al Pacino, who plays Jimmy Hoffa, and Joe Pesci, who plays Russell Buffalino. There are so many character moments that are profoundly deep, and make you, the viewer, reflective on life, just like the characters. In my opinion, the film does feel a little long-winded, and even though I wasn't compelled by the entire story, I cannot deny that the craftsmanship on display is worthy of respect. It looks and sounds great, the acting is top class, the editing is close to perfect, and the directing is incredible by Scorsese. This isn't just a typical gangster film. There is something that the characters are conveying, especially towards the end, that is emotionally impactful, and even though it is a slog to get through, I believe this is an amazing film that deserves respect. I just think I will come to appreciate it more over time, just like a fine bottle of wine. Now, there were so many little spoilery moments that I could talk about and deconstruct, but if I did that, I would be here all day, and the video would be far too long. So, there is only one thing I want to address that involves spoilers. So again, if you have not seen the film yet, now is your spoiler warning. Click off the video now and check it out on Netflix. The last couple scenes with Frank as an old man is what I want to analyze. My first impression whilst watching it was to feel sorry for Frank because of his loneliness and the troubles he was going through as an older gentleman. However, afterwards, when I gave the story more thought, I came to the realization that my sympathetic feelings were misguided. Frank wasn't left alone because he was old. He was left alone 
due to the terrible choices he made throughout his life that ultimately pushed his loving family away. Frank not only killed one of his best friends, but he murdered countless other people and slowly receded more and more into the mob lifestyle. He became alienated by his family because it was apparent he cared more for that lifestyle than raising his daughters. And that is why no one comes to visit him. Once this realization hit me, the final moment became even more bittersweet. Yes, everyone he used to know is dead, but when you think about it, was it all worth it in the end? The journey Frank goes on is quite tragic, and I feel the filmmakers did a great job translating this story to screen despite the extremely long runtime. My last food for thought which I'll leave you with is this. As the director, Scorsese is deliberately maneuvering through the story at a slow and methodical pace. Everything he does, he does with purpose. And this results in a three and a half hour film that relies on great conversations. My question is, if the filmmakers set out to accomplish something specific and achieve it, if you as the viewer don't like that choice, does that make it a flaw in the film? I personally was fatigued by the runtime, but at the same time, everything on screen was relevant. So when I came to giving the film a letter grade, I didn't know if I should factor this into my grade. I always try to be as objective as possible when reviewing movies, but ultimately film is subjective and everyone has their own opinion. Regardless, let me know your thoughts to this answer in the comments below. The Irishman isn't quite perfect, but it is still an incredibly well-crafted film, so I'm giving it an A-. This is where I throw it over to you. Let's create a conversation down in the comments below. Let me know the lines of dialogue or crazy moments or great scenes that stood out to you. And let's discuss them in the comments below. Full spoilers, of course. If you enjoyed this review, please hit that like button, share it with your friends. And if you are new to the channel, make sure you click that subscribe button. And also make sure the notification button is turned on. I don't believe this will win the best picture, but if it does, I wouldn't necessarily be opposed to it. I just think that there are better movies more deserving of the award. Stay tuned to find out which ones. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in another video.